Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry. Today's video is another adventurer spotlight, this one very special. Today I'm going to be talking about the first unit I ever summoned in Dragalia Lost. That's right, this spotlight video is all about Eleonora. If you're new to the channel and wondering why she's such a favorite of mine, it's because she was my tutorial summon back when the game launched. I didn't pull it all until I had beaten the campaign of Dragalia Lost, so Eleonora was my one unique unit. She definitely has some flaws, and her design reflects some of the issues with most of the early archers. So I had been thinking about when to do this spotlight and to whom it would really be helpful. Now that the channel has surpassed 5,000 subscribers though, I thought this might be a good way to celebrate. Thanks for helping me reach that new milestone at a speed I never expected. Now, on to the analysis. Eleonora is a natural 4 star wind element archer. She is one of many wind units to wield the bow and falls somewhere in the middle in terms of her strength and HP. Her strength is the second highest by a few points, while her HP is the second lowest. Among all wind units, she compares less favorably. As an archer, Eleonora has a skill haste co ability which can reach up to 15% once fully upgraded. I wouldn't suggest you do that unless you're a diehard Eleonora fan like me, but at least at 15%, skill haste can feel noticeable for a variety of other units. That's something, right? Eleanor's abilities, though, are fairly lackluster. She could really use a buff. Trust me, I say that with no bias. Her first ability is full HP equals poison of up to 50%. This increases the chance that she poisons enemies when her HP is full. It's honestly a pretty underwhelming effect, and it's similar to the full HP equals affliction abilities seen on other launch archers like Wake, Joe, Hawk, and Nefaria. I hope this gets reworked. Eleanor's kit is centered around poison, so you might think this ability is good. There are several issues to unpack here though. First, against foes who can't be poisoned at all, this ability won't change that. Second, enemies who can get poisoned will build up a 20% tolerance each time you poison them. Third, Eleonora already has a solid base chance to poison on both her skills, making this ability superfluous. And fourth, this ability only works at full HP. That's not easy for an archer to maintain on multi-enemy maps. All in all, this full HP ability and abilities like it are among the worst in the game. Eleanor's second ability, Bagrez, is a bit better. Since she gets up to 100%, she can splash around in water-based traps freely and tank bog-inducing attacks unimpeded. The only bad thing about this, however, is that as it turns out, bog isn't really an obstacle when it comes to harder endgame content. The toughest bog-inducing boss fight versus High Mercury doesn't require bog res in order to succeed at all. Every move except the initial blast in that battle can be dodged. Bog res doesn't hurt, but doesn't help much either. Eleanor's final ability unlocked as a 5 star is also just okay. Skill prep of 50% will help Eleonora use her skills sooner to start a fight. However, Eleanor's skills already charge rapidly. This ability is much better on characters whose moves charge slowly. As things stand, the benefit is fairly small. On top of this, Eleanor doesn't really have any exploitable skills that benefit from being used at the start of a quest. There's a slight exception for her Viper Bolt since it lets her jump, but the use of that is extremely niche. And speaking of Viper Bolt, that brings us to Eleonora's skills. Viper Bolt is her first skill, and it's a jumping attack which inflicts poison with 110% base chance once fully upgraded. It looks stylish, but that's about all I can say on it. The poison on it is more effective than on Eleonora's second skill though, so you should always try and induce poison on a boss with this rather than her second skill if possible. Eleanor's second skill is called Vendetta Arrow. This deals damage in a line, meaning it can hit multiple enemies. The damage dealt versus a single target and the poison effect are weaker than those seen on Viper Bolt. It can be tricky to align this versus lots of enemies, but it is pretty effective if you can funnel them into a corridor or line together. Perhaps that scenario might arise in the Mercurial Gauntlet. Otherwise, I'll add that it is pretty nice that Eleanor has multiple quick-to-charge attacking skills. Viper Bolt takes around 1.5 bow combos to charge, depending on her level of skill haste. Vendetta Arrow is slower, taking a little more than 3 bow combos. 
There are also two main combo methods for bows. You can do four normal attacks into a four strike for the most damage, but slightly worse SP generation. Or you can do five normal attacks, but do slightly less damage. Either approach can work fine for Eleonora, so I usually opt for more damage via four strikes when it's easy to land them. There is one corner case if your Eleonora has her skill haste co ability fully upgraded. At 15% skill haste, she can charge her second skill in under three combos. However, you need these combos to use 5 basic attacks for that extra SP gen. Combos with the 4 strike method won't get you there in time, although if you have 12% striking haste, you could do 1 4 strike combo and 2 basic attack ones. Overall, Eleanor's kit is okay. The reliance on afflictions for damage can be a weakness since bosses build up a tolerance to afflictions in increments of 20% every time they're afflicted. Her abilities are also pretty weak, but the good news for Eleonora is that she at least has two attacking skills. That makes building and using her pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and switch over to build ideas now. As we discuss, I'll play my third ever clear of High Mercury with Eleonora. Thanks to my teammates for helping me clear it and patiently allowing me to practice playing as her. For dragons, Eleonora wants access to as much strength as possible. Pazuzu and Zephyr are the best options, followed by Longlong Long and Brock. Pazuzu is practically made for Eleonora and other poison-based adventurers, although do keep in mind his utility falls greatly against bosses who cannot be poisoned. In terms of weapons, Eleonora needs the raw stats from the 5-star elemental bow Stellar Pegasus to contribute much damage in the endgame. The skill to boost her own critical rate for 10 seconds on that weapon isn't especially good, although it's at least slightly interesting when paired with her Worm Prince or with a dragon like Longlong. Long. If you don't plan to take Eleanor to High Mercury, since to be fair, it requires a lot of investment, then I'd suggest settling for the 4-star Wind Bow Epidemic. This bow gives Eleonora a third attacking skill instead, which is perfect for skill damage Worm Prince. The skills on both weapons take between 4 and 5 bow combos to fully charge. Another lesser option is the Void Weapon Storm Fungus. This has Wind Copy Punisher and Thaumian's Bane, so it's only really relevant versus the Frost Hermit Void battle right now. That fight is easy enough that I would suggest skipping this bow altogether. Perhaps if an especially tough battle emerges with clones, this would be something to consider. But for now, this bow isn't really needed. For Worm Prince, there are a couple of combinations that I particularly like. If you want Eleanor to cap off her skill damage from Prince at 40%, Forest Bonds does so with one slot. The Striking Haste is just an extra in the case of Eleonora. I would pair a Worm Print like that with Levin's Champion, which has nice self-synergy and works well with her 5-star bow. Personally, this is the build I've invested in and use most frequently with my Eleonora. Another option, though, is to equip Resounding Rendition instead, trading down to 30% skill damage in exchange for 8% extra critical rate when above 70% HP. That'd pair well with Evening of Luxury, which grants a large amount of strength at full HP and lots of critical damage. In High Mercury's Trial, where you can reliably dodge every attack except the first, I think this might be the best possible combination. Finally, let's talk about teammates for Eleonora. Context matters a lot here since there really aren't too many maps where you'd need to use her. She's fine for Mercury's Trial, Water Elemental Ruins, and High Mercury's Trial, but that's about it. Even Water Imperial Onslaught isn't great for her. Since the basic Trial and Elemental Ruins can be easily auto-battled, let's focus our attention on HMC. Eleanor has two weaknesses in that fight. Her damage output isn't the best, and her being a ranged unit means she takes more damage than melee characters. Someone like Lin Yu helps in both areas thanks to her defense co ability and high personal DPS. Adis is the other unit I like thanks to his strength co ability and bleed mechanic, 
although he doesn't help with Eleanor's survival. The other note about both these units is that they have personal time-limited buffs. Both want to activate their first skill twice within one buff from their second skill. Eleanor's skill haste co-ability makes that slightly easier or, at the very least, more consistent even without optimal play. And that brings us to Eleanor's competition. Like I said at the beginning of this video, there are several wind bows and Eleanor falls somewhere in the middle. For HMC specifically, it's rough, but it's true, Louise is basically a fixed or better version of Eleonora. Her passive abilities are actually relevant, and she has multiple attacking skills just like Eleonora does. Plus, her strength is only slightly below Eleonora's too. The other two bows, Felia and Hawk, have different uses. Hawk is the best candidate for Water IO thanks to his Freeze Res. He also has one of the strongest skill damage modifiers in the game on his Savage Hawk skill if the enemy is stunned, so he's excellent for memeing on enemies with burst damage. Felia, meanwhile, doesn't really have a home right now. She's a natural 3 star with Paralysis Res, which is unusual for a wind unit. Thankfully, it's one less unit for Eleonora to seriously contend with. Hey, at least she's not the worst wind bow out there. Sorry, Felia fans. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Eleonora is my favorite unit because she's been with me through my entire journey in Dragalia Lost. Her kit suffers from some problems which are common to many bow units, especially those released at launch. Her damage output, even under ideal circumstances, isn't very good for taking on High Mercury, although it can be done. I've pretty much beaten every quest with her except High Brunhilde, which is still a work in progress but should be possible. Hopefully, if nothing else, that gives you encouragement to use your favorite characters too. At the end of the day, this game is fairly flexible. Pick who you love and bring them to their full potential. Okay, thank you so much for watching everyone and continuing to support the channel. I'll keep doing my best to bring you new content to enjoy every week. I'd love to hear your feedback or ideas for future videos in the comments below. I know there are many characters you still want to see spotlights on, there's many guides yet to be made, so rest assured those are coming. It all just takes time. Otherwise everyone, thank you once again, take care, and I'll see you next time.